Thank you for joining today. I'm James Mansfield with Analytics for Living. We'll be sharing the series off of using utilizing artificial intelligence and machine learning focused today on post-traumatic stress syndrome and how patients can be helped with AI and ML. So our objective today is to review and discuss how Analytics for Living well, employs machine learning and AI technology including reporting and analytics for, to help patients with post-traumatic stress syndrome. We'll, we'll go through a quick introduction, walk through the problem statement, provide a couple examples, share with you also our call to action and the approaches, and then follow up with any services and questions and discussion that you may have. Great, uh, so to jump in, but first let's do a quick disclosure. Uh, the views here displayed uh, and shared are those views of myself and not of any client or company or prior company I've worked have to start out with that disclosure. <laughs> so Analytics for Living and Data Prime. Uh, so I'm James Mansfield, I said I lead Analytics for Living. Uh, we apply machine learning and artificial intelligence to health, innovation, technology, growth, and financial stability. Uh, I am also a lead consultant with uh, Data Prime where I lead our, their life science practice. I have 25 years of experience within the life science industry, including, oops, including consumer packaged goods, financial services, and most recently I come from Merck and GSK. Uh, from Data Prime, our uh, representative is uh, Tyler Roth. Uh, Tyler Roth comes from uh, a few different leading companies, uh, including the US government, military, Amazon, Comcast, and leads town acquisition at uh, Data Prime. And the intent here is that we offer some great analytics uh, to provide insights and help patients. And then when you need talent that kind of staff and manage that on a good basis, we have Data Prime poised here to kind of put, pull in a team for you. So let's talk about post-traumatic stress disorder, right? PTSD. Right, it's a mental health problem that some people develop after experiencing or witnessing kind of this life event like combat, or natural disaster, car accident, sexual assault, assault, uh, even COVID, right? I think has been pretty dramatic for all of us. So during this event, you feel almost out of control, wonder like what's happening to you, you know, and may feel afraid. Uh, but this is typical of you know post-traumatic stress disorder. Not everyone develops PTSD, but it does happen for some. Some people do take some time to be upset, but you know, some others, it does take longer. And that's where PTSD diagnosis, you know, occurs. So what are these symptoms, right? And uh, example here that uh, patient there experienced some symptoms. So, you know, um, some of the post-traumatic stress symptoms are intrusive sim thoughts, right? Kind of saying, hey, I'm, you know, very into myself. I can't do, do things. A nightmare is very common. Avoid, avoiding reminders of the event, right? Like not wanting to, to talk or discuss. Um, memory loss, not remembering the event, you know, negative thoughts. Uh, Self-isolation, you know, feeling distant as you see this person here, you know, anger, irritable, reduced activity, really not being able to do, kind of do the things you want to do, right? Difficult to kind of training, um, vivid flashbacks, you know, putting blame somewhere else, you know, feeling positive emotions. I mean, all these things are um, risky behaviors even. These are all, you know, areas that are, are typical of post-traumatic stress syndrome, right? It was post-PTSD uh, month in June to kind of bring more awareness to the problem. Um, and these uh, list of symptoms are on that on their you know PTC month awareness uh, site as well, right? So how big, how many patients suffer, right? So if we think and so this will get into some of the problem statement of how many people, right? In in the U.S., it's roughly estimated about 8.6 million. So right, it's a lot of people. 8.6 million having PTSD, and the prevalence is about 5.7 percent. Um, and if someone does experience PTSD, you know when you look at their treatment to kind of to overcome that, it's roughly about you know nineteen, almost twenty thousand dollars, right? Very significant uh, cost and uh, for those patients, and then and and also for the system, right? Um, if we if we just drill down into post traumatic stress syndrome within the military, since two thousand, it's estimated to be more than this, but the kind of the rough numbers recently published were around one hundred thirty eight thousand that have been affected, and the prevalence is you know double the to quadruple, right? What you see, um, obviously, is a combat and so forth, but uh, it's 11 to 20% prevalence. And uh, the roughly cost is about $21,000 um, per patient. So, you know, all these are quite sig significant uh, for patients given, you know, from the prior and then for these as well. Um, you know, fast forward now today where we are on broader estimates, right? You know, one, one statistic that I think, you know, is, is to be quantified, but definitely has been shown to cause some let's say struggling with mental health challenges, right? Like PTSD is you know, a recent study from a CDC said due to COVID and the pandemic, roughly 40% of the US population, that's 40%, right? Of the US population 
is experiencing some type of mental health challenges at the moment. And I can, you know, I can certainly relate personally and also challenge. I think everyone's kind of had a lot of stress, you know, and stressors related to this, you know, certainly around COVID. And I think, you know, if you did even have, you know, or experience or see or on TV or a family member that have COVID, uh, one, I hope they're okay and everyone's recovered, but it certainly was a traumatic event where you feel powerless. So I think, you know, in light of COVID, it's going to cause an increase of some of these PTSD symptoms um, and, and, you know, unfortunately behaviors or lack thereof. Right. You know, another example that of a trending issue um, and on both a prior, you know, COVID analysis and then also on this situation on, on teen suicide, we have a separate uh, webinar series that we do just on this. We did for Mental Health Awareness Month in June. Uh, but teen suicide has become an increasing problem in the U.S. Um, if you look at the, and then when I mean teens, I'm talking about the 15 to 24, I'm going to go left to right. So the 15 to 24 um, age group is roughly teens. And that um, surprisingly, and unfortunately, it's about, the, it is the number two cause of death, right? And it's increased 56%, you know, teen suicide increased about 56% in the past 10 years. And uh, with that, the depressions are up 10% of all teens, 30% of students, right? Um, and even 17% contemplating, you know, very scary. Uh, so I think this TOEFL, one leading up to this, right, what caused it, but then also if this did happen in a community, a city, or even you saw it on the news or it happened in a, in a system next to us, uh, you know, we, we all can relate and feel um, challenged. And I think that's, that's another area for PTSD as well. So if we say about, okay, well, where does the AI machine learning come in the fit here, right? Um, well, I'm gonna walk you through step left to right, right? So we start on the left, right? PTSD, the problem statement, roughly we see about 9 million patients, right? That are um, experiencing some type of PTSD symptoms, right? The prevalence is about 6% for general, right? I gave it five point something, I'm rounding up in the military about 20%. Um, you know, obviously there's COVID challenges, which, which we're still in the midst of. And the rising depression, you know, substance use and suicide rates, right? All these things were are continuing that kind of are part of the problem here that can relate or related to some of the PTSD symptoms, right? Um, so what can be done is there's a lot of data and, analyt data and analytics reporting available, but it certainly needs to come to breath, right? Depression rates can be studied in a survey or in the US patient level data exists where we can quantify or the use of um, some depression medications can be utilized to see if the rates are consistent or if there's, you know, hot zones, as you see here, that illustrated example on the right. Um, and also, you know, unfortunately, suicide rates can be done and analyzed. Um, all this can be looked at at the state counselor level, including, I mean, within when I say counselor patient at the patient level, meaning go into a system, like let's take a school system and say, who's at risk? Or if there's an event, grab the event within the system, say, okay, who is exposed, right? So they can be kind of, you know, addressed and we can do more re reach out. And similarly with the military, I think it's another opportunity. Um, and also I think the idea to kind of enroll in a program, and I, I say counseling services here, but almost a wellness program, right? Of trying to have a wellness program around when, if something did happen in the future, kind of how do you coach yourself to help to get through that and overcome, right? So what can be done is as subnational analytics, which is you see on the right, um, but, you know, where the machine learning and AI comes in, it's certainly more predictive because it doesn't just look at one factor, it looks at many, many factors. And we can then kind of identify someone that is diagnosed with PTSD and say, okay, what are those factors? What are those key factors so that we can learn from that where the AI comes in to learn from that and then say, all right, here's a group, right, of individuals that had all these features, right? There could be a risk and we should offer some type of services or some other solutions, right? Um, and then the, um, the uh, and let's say on the right there, uh, where we have the picture. So the counseling service is one, you know, example of kind of a, a call to action to kind of go out, but then the subnational risk is kind of a view that you can look at the, at the geography level, but then the patient risk, obviously you can kind of drill in to kind of see the patient and have that discussion. So I think that's all the, it's a real good, you know, ways and approaches to go about this, to, you know, help solve the problem. Um, and we do have this, you know, the subnational risk uh, syndicated with a lot of data that we can, you know, provide. So certainly welcome, you know, sub, um, individuals to subscribe to that. So our recommendation here is supporting, you know, PTSD awareness, treatment, and access to therapy in the U.S. And the recommendations is, you know, analytics with new metrics of PTSD, which be, you know, analyze at the subnational, explore COVID. Maybe there's rates of geography with a higher rate of COVID. Maybe at a, at, a, at a school, there was a, you know, unfortunately a suicide or maybe there's some school violence, right? All the, those are opportunities to kind of do more 
analytics and offer some solutions. And then at the employer or the military staff or unit, you know, there's a way to you know ex explore and see if there were rates of um, you know some type of trauma that could be you know alerted some of those individuals. So recommendations from this, what could be done? Well, if there is a need, well, potentially maybe there's stand up counseling services like Planned Parenthood, right, for PTSD. Uh, you know, why aren't there counseling services around that for PTSD due to COVID? I mean, there are significantly large grants that the government's giving, and this is, I think, a great kind of output of that to, um, you know, provide more services and so forth. And then the um, counseling services is certainly a great way, as well as the subnational and the patient risk kind of score and analysis. Right. So this summarizes our quick approach. Um, I'm going to spend two, two, three minutes here just to go through kind of a little bit analysts for living and what we offer uh, to see, you know, to see if you're interested in this and you can certainly schedule another webinar, reach out to me directly. So um, analytics for living, it's you know, our vision is to enable analytics for life. Right. We uh, believe that analytics is needed to improve the health of populations. The mission is to improve um, access right to life saving medications, uh, which both, you know, improve lives of individuals, but then also you know, provide the lives of um, the system, the community, so forth. And uh, the solutions we have are utilizing machine learning and AI, which then provide a visualization on your phone to kind of see what happens or your, or your digital piece to see what's happening in the community. Um, and they're easy to be stood up. You know, like we said, we do have a subscription available. Uh, Analytics for Living is a foundation, is a 503C organization. So uh, typically how we work with clients is you'll license in that as a, as a donation, uh, you know, or a grant um, to do analytics on there. And if there's an opportunity where you wanted to share your data into that, you know, we could partner up to, um, to do that as well. We do have those services um, to support. Great, and then on the right, as I mentioned for, in the beginning for Data Prime, certainly if you need staff to kind of run those tools or run others, that's where Data Prime can come in and can provide, you know, some great staff to use AI within their algorithm to find people and find talent and a uh, great solution there for them to um, reach out and so forth. That's perfect. So, so thank you, um, and I appreciate. It. I saw a couple of questions coming in the chat. Uh, you know, a call to action that we, we always say is, you know, subscribe to the Analytics for Living Machine Learning AI Services. It's on the website. There is one here specifically for PTSD, um, and then the, as a follow up uh, from that, or even pre that, we can schedule a meeting to review and discuss your need. Um, and please join the next webinar. We're posting them on LinkedIn, and uh, hope you enjoyed this one, and look forward to seeing you the next. Thank you.